Hi everyone, I'm Michael Wolhoff and this is a paper called ZSwap, uh, implementing non-interactive multi-asset swaps on top of Zcash. So we start from a very basic separation between public and private ledgers. So in the public world, you usually have some kind of transactions that send money in clear. And then if party A will send something to B, it needs to reference the transaction, the previous one uh, that sends money to A from C. And then the, it attaches some kind of a signature to prove that it authorizes this spend. If you want to do something like that in the private setting, usually it's much more complicated. So you have um, all the values inside the transaction hidden by default, and then A only sees its own transaction, and then when it wants to send something to B, B will only see only this, its own transaction, but not the previous input. So to reference the previous transaction, you need to attach some kind of a proof or a signature, a zero knowledge proof in case of Zcash, or a ring signature in case of Monero, which will hide the um, the, the, the way money was flowing into this account, into the last account. This difference is very visible if uh, we are trying to build some kind of centralized finance solutions in the public world where we only have, where we have smart contracts. Uh, for example, take Ethereum or Cardano. On these platforms, you can build uh, lots of different tools like, um, you know, automatic market makers, exchanges, lending platforms, investment stable coins, etc. Um, if someone wants to implement something like that on private crypto cards, on private ledgers, um, again, it's it's much more complicated, not just of inherent because of inherent implementations, but because of just the you know practical considerations. Um, if you want to add some kind of an anonymization tool on top of Cardano or any public chain, essentially, uh, like a Tumblr or a Mixer, it's often trusted to anonymous or it requires a lot of setup. If you want to add smart contracts on private um, private chains such that such as uh, Zcash or Monero, it is quite challenging. It is just quite challenging. And private smart contracts, um, theoretically possible, even practically possible, but still uh, not being implemented on any big scale because of their because of many practical problems in, in, with their implementation. So. What we're trying to solve here, what we're trying to attack here, is this area of hybrid solutions where we have um, private cryptocurrencies, but we add very basic multi-token functionality here to them. So examples of those are, for example, Swap City. This is a paper by our co-author Felix Engelmann presented at PETS21. So this adds um, swaps into Monero, essentially. And then we also have, for example, these two categories of solutions so called user-defined assets on the cash and multi-asset shielded pool, MASP, on Tezos and Anoma. And these are pretty much the same idea of how do you add multiple tokens on top of Zcash-like uh, cryptocurrency. So we believe that these solutions can be a very solid basis uh, for later interacting with private smart contracts. So they are very necessary to get right. Um, and in this area, we present our work uh, called Zswap. It's a cryptocurrency mechanism, very much Zcash-like, an extension of, of, of Zcash, um, which presents multi-asset atomic swaps. So multi-asset means that we add types into the nodes. So we have a node, like a bank node that holds the value and also the type. So you can represent many different types um, in the vein of ERC-20 smart contracts. This formalizes MSP. So we do provide a regress analysis for MSP. Um, and atomic swaps means that whenever two parties have some coins, so uh, this person on the left has five pounds and the person on the right has four euro and they can swap that atomically. And we realize the swap by essentially allowing merging transactions together non interactively So how do we do that? that? Let's start from something very simple. Let's start from uh, Zcash sapling. We will only cover sapling uh, if not said otherwise. So in Zcash, we have these two main building blocks, I would, I would say they're called nodes and nullifiers. So nodes are these uh, things containing values. And from a node, if you own the node, if you have a secret key, you can derive uh, using PRF a nullifier. And these two things are unlinkable. If you see a nullifier of someone node, you cannot know what node it contains. So now Zcash maintains two structures, commitment tree, so a tree of commitments uh, of nodes, and then set of nullifiers. Whenever a transaction comes that wants to spend some coins and output some coins, it has a set of input nullifiers instead of output commitment nodes. And so in the end, when transaction is verified, nullifiers go to this um, uh, set of nullifiers and the commitments go to this first set of uh, commitment trees, sorry, into the commitment tree. So if nullifiers, nullifiers prevent double spending. So if nullifier is present here, it means that the uh, commitment was already, the node was already spent. 
to prove that everything works, that the nullifiers are correctly formed and the commitments are correctly formed, uh, Zcash uses uh, NISIX. So we have a NISIC, in something we have a NISIC per input, NISIC per output. So the input NISIC says that the input nullifiers are correctly formed from some nodes in the Merkle tree, and output NISIC say that the commitments are just correctly formed. But one thing that is not solved by NISIC directly is the balance. So how do we make sure that the values inside this input nodes and the values inside output nodes uh, do balance? So input values minus output values is more than zero. So again, in, in Zcash, uh, it's solved by adding so adding, adding commitments, homomorphic commitments. So this is our nullifiers and commitments um, of nodes, and we add these value commitments inside here. So each Proof contains it, so each, each node contains a value and the randomness on each side, and then the commitment is just h to the value and g to the r. And as you may see, if you have commitments to all these values on the left and the right, individual ones, if you s multiply everything on the left and divide by everything on the right, so this value, you will get a commitment to zero. If everything balances, it's commitment to zero with this joint randomness r. And then what Zcash does is that it says we have this joint randomness R, and we have this G to the R, so this is a kind of a binding secret key, and the right thing is binding public key, and Zcash provides a Schnorr signature, essentially, the signature sigma on the whole transaction, proving the knowledge of BSK with respect to BPK. BPK is public, BSK is secret. This is how they solve it. So our thinking is what happens if we just open this value R, and we don't try to put it inside Schnorr, inside any non interactive zero knowledge proof. So the answer is, we get balancing, so we still achieve balancing, and we achieve some binding. So we don't achieve fully bind, full binding, but we achieve exactly the type of binding we want to get for swaps. Transactions can be merged, so you can have two transactions, you can merge them together, so all the inputs can contain it and all the outputs can contain it, but you can't split them apart because you don't know the individual randomnesses which you need to split your transaction into. So the first thing that we change is the commitment scheme, the value commitment scheme, we add types into it. So now the type is hashed first, and this hash of type is the new base H of type. Uh, we use different bases for different types. This is how we arrive at this vector Patterson commitment scheme with a very interesting homomorphic property, such that uh, different um, types produce different bases, and so the values of different types are not summed, are not summed together. But the randomness, the joint randomness, is still the same as in standard commitment scheme, standard Patterson commitment scheme. To achieve balancing with this vector Patterson commitment scheme is easy as easy as it was before. Essentially, you have still these values, but now also types and the commitments to typed values. And then, as before, we just take a product of the, all the inputs and divide by the product of all the outputs, and we get a commitment to zero. It's a vector, so a vector of zero for different types, and this joint randomness R. The difference is that the R is now part of the, part of the transaction, and then we just open it, as we said before. The Z swap transaction comprises of uh, the basic bits, nullifiers, commitments to the output nodes, zero knowledge proofs, and this vector patterns and commitments. But these vector commitments and circuits are very much like in Zcash. So we ignore it for now. It's not very interesting. What is interesting is this open randomness, which allows us to merge and split things, or merge but not split things. And then we have this imbalance per type. So imbalance per type is just an open set that map maps types to the imbalance. For example, if I have an unbalanced transaction, so it's a standard transaction with the non-zero imbalance, um, it say sells some nodes, so sells some coins of type green, it receives some coins of type red, its imbalance is five for green and minus three for red. If transaction is finalized, is balanced, its imbalance is zero. So we get to the swap mechanics now, which is very important. So how do we swap? How do we swap things in, in this swap? For example, A creates an offer. It's an unbalanced transaction from A to A. A wants to sell some green and receive some red. So it creates a transaction, it has this imbalance, public. B does the same, but with different values, the opposite values, for simplicity of the example. Then these two offers are sent to anyone, this merger, M, and anyone who sees these two transactions can essentially merge them together into one transaction. And when you merge transactions, you erase information about their imbalance. So this transaction in the end is just exactly just as the basic Zcash transaction. It doesn't have any imbalances. It's fully, uh, it fully hides all the values inside. And this is then sent to the blockchain. There are different ways that you can, um, that the user A can uh, send this offer to, to, to different parties. So for example, A can, uh, try to swap some funds with B by sending an offer directly to B, and then B creates its own offer, it matches, and then it merges transactions together, 
and sends it to, to the blockchain. Um, at the same time, there might be a party called matching service that collects lots of different offers, and then it just merges them all together. Maybe it also implements some kind of additional mechanics on you know, interacting with users and saying, telling them what is happening to their offers. And so in the same way, just it, it is exactly like an exchange uh, platform where you see different offers and then try to match those which can, which can be matched. So additionally to this, we also uh, argue that um, informally, that this is a minimal trust implemented that is necessary for exchange because it, you cannot exchange funds without revealing at least the imbalance of it. So it gives this, the system gives a flexibility of how and whom does it trust in exchange and things, but essentially A cannot reveal less than what it reveals for now in the offer. Uh, additionally to this, M can collect fees. So M can always add an additional fee output to the transactions and collect some money for its service. And then it is also possible for A and B and other users to cancel offers. So this works quite flexible in that respect. It's very basic, but very flexible. We prove system secure in the standard model, in the game-based setting, essentially we have properties like anti-theft, which is we can merge transactions but not split them. We have a balance which says funds are secure, so you cannot uh, spend funds that are not yours, essentially. And then privacy that you cannot see what happens on the blockchain, kind of in this invisibility notion. Um, and finally, uh, performance of our system is very close to the uh, basic Zcash, so it's quite efficient in that sense. Um, this table compares this swap with uh, our implementation of Sapling and the basic Sapling. And you can see, for example, for spending proofs and outputting proofs, and so for generating spend and output proofs and verifying them, uh, the uh, amount of time spent is pretty much the same. Um, merging transactions and creating them is extremely cheap. Um, and then the only difference that is noticeable is creating and verifying commitments, but it's just because the Patterson commitment scheme is a bit more complicated. But that's the overhead is still very small. And overall, the overhead compared to the cash is quite minimal. And that's pretty much it. Thank you.